I know what you're thinking right now. I know you're looking at the day of the video and you're like, oh my goodness, Lewis had just posted five days ago. And you're right. And we're making another video because our old schedule's back. It's back, baby. We are going to be posting one video every single day. Uh, what? No. One video every single weekend. That still didn't make sense. One video every single week. We're doing it. It's going to be great. Lucid and Alvin all summer. My school is almost done. It's We're going to be two months of videos. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so lit. Yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Lucid Dad. There's Alvin today, guys. We are reviewing another movie about time we're back into the business. We are reviewing the Flash movie starring Ezra Miller and Michael Keaton. Let's give a little round of applause for Michael Keaton. You know, coming back as Batman. It's great. It's great. So, yeah. Let's just get right into it. So, this movie is directed by Andreas uh, Muschietti. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, for those of you who don't know who he is, he directed the whole IT trilogy. And as a horror movie director, he did a really good job directing a DC movie. Now, I don't have any complaints with this movie. I thought this movie was really good. But um, I see where the horror aspects with like the dark flash and stuff came in because i was wondering i was like oh this is weird this isn't this doesn't seem familiar so this is why you see a lot of these darker scenes it's because of our lord and savior himself andres machidi by the way great directing i love this movie i, I just i'm talking about more later before we get really into the review i'm gonna be talking about what i thought this movie was gonna be about so because this movie I thought was gonna be Flashpoint. If y'all don't know what Flashpoint is, it's um, a really good comic book. I suggest you go read it after you're done watching this video. Go try to buy it somewhere. And they made a movie. It's one of the Justice League animated movies. They made a movie about Flashpoint. And I thought it was gonna be just like this because when I read the the the, the description of the movie, um, it was about Barry going back in time trying to save his mother. I was like, oh, shit, it's gonna be like. Um, uh, flashpoint but it wasn't so that kind of sucked so how what I thought was gonna happen in this movie was it starts off with Barry um, with his dad and he's in prison that's that's what happened in the movie I'm just, and then he goes back and sees like these flashbacks of him and his mom and how his dad was treated unfairly if that's a word um, and he gets motivated to run and then he runs back in time on accident um, uh, saves his mom, goes back, and realizes stuff is different. And then, and then he explores a little bit, you know, bada bing, bada boom. Um, Thomas Wayne, Fla um, Flash, Thomas Wayne, Batman. That's why I thought Michael Keaton was gonna be. I thought he, I didn't know he was gonna be Bruce Wayne. I thought he was gonna be um, Thomas Wayne. And yeah, and then you know the script just goes from there. And then Reverse Flash was all under it. And then yeah, but unfortunately we didn't see Reverse Flash. We didn't see Thomas Wayne, but we did see everything else. But we did see another Barry Allen. So everything I said kind of happened. Barry wanted to go back in time, reverse stuff. But then Dark Flash pushes him out of the Speed Force. Well, I think that they don't call it the Speed Force in this movie. I think they call it like something else. And then he meets 18-year-old Barry. But for some reason, as soon as he goes there. And he sees 18-year-old Barry. He doesn't reverse time. He's stupid and just talks to him. Like, I don't know what that was all about. But, you know, whatever, dumbass. And then it's the same day he gets his powers coincidentally. And then, yeah, then the movie carries on from there. I don't like the whole double Barry idea. I th it, it wasn't bad. I, I like their spin on this movie. But, like, I didn't... It, I'm not the biggest fan. I would prefer Flashpoint. But, like... Um, they did a really good spin on it, and I, you can tell that it took a lot of effort to get the script idea instead of just doing Flashpoint, which we've already seen a couple times. Because I'm pretty sure they didn't want to make this movie like Grant Gustin's show, so I, that's why they did the double the double berries. Um, we're gonna be talking about Batman now. Um, there was three Batman in this movie. We had Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton, and George Clooney. Um. Ben Affleck was in this movie for a little bit. Um, still really good looking fella. Um, Michael Keaton got old and George Clooney got old for being the hottest Batman. Um, how did they do? They did really well. I like the spin they did on Michael Keaton's Batman. Um, I really loved how it, instead of doing the Ben Affleck um, switched with Michael Keaton, it was everything was switched with Michael Keaton so you saw the Batcave, the Batmobile, the suits all of it was switched with Michael Keaton stuff 
and it's it felt fresh it felt better because I thought they were just gonna like just switch out the Batmans but I'm glad they didn't I'm glad they just just switched out the universes and then at the end we saw George Clooney um partially I don't know how much money he made from this movie but probably not a lot but um I wonder where they're gonna go with George Clooney I wonder if this was just like a joke and it wasn't like a big deal so if we're gonna see George Clooney again great if we're not also pretty cool but you know I'm gonna miss Ben Affleck <laughs> um this movie felt like um a flashpoint movie but at the same time it didn't what I mean by that is this movie um throughout the third half uh, the third part of the what's it called the second half of the movie I don't know why I said third um, in the second half of the movie it just felt like freaking um, what's it called Man of Steel part 2 because they found Supergirl and then they just fought Zod like we've seen that before with the whole Man of Steel but I don't know I, that's just me I didn't like how we had to see Zod again I, I didn't like Man of Steel so like you know um, but yeah Carl Zorel was in this movie Supergirl um, who played her again? Sasha Kale, I think that's her name, played as Supergirl, and, um, a Latina Supergirl, that's a great twist, I'm not gonna say much, um, <laughs> but, you know, to all my Latina boys out there, this will be a great movie for you. Outside of the jokes and everything, I think she did a great job as Supergirl, we didn't, Supergirl is known for a really exciting character, a really, um, out there but in this movie she's more quiet and like um more like to herself i understand she just got out of like a prison and stuff but i i would like a little bit of humor here and there but it, she 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 did good in the movie it wasn't bad i don't know why but i want to see kristen stewart play as um supergirl i think she'd be a really good supergirl um for those of you who don't know who she is she played um freaking bella from twilight and the girl from Charlie's Angels, that's all I can remember from, honestly, she's not that popular, but, like, um, I think she would have done good as Supergirl, too, um, I, I think, um, Sasha and Kristen kind of look the same, um, but that's just me, I, I think Kristen Stewart could have done a good job, she wanted, they wanted to do the same type of acting job for Supergirl, um, let's get to the plot, so, um, 9 out of 10 plot, I really enjoyed it, it was really, um, it was, I think The Flash was probably one of the best movies I've seen in 2023, but, like, they didn't do Flashpoint, that's what kind of bothered me, I thought when they said they were doing Flash, a uh, Flashpoint thing, I, I was like, okay, cool, but they did their own thing, but because of they did their own thing, it was really good, it, I really enjoyed their version of Flashpoint, so, it's just, I don't know, it was a good plot, but I, it, I just didn't like how it wasn't, like, how I expected it to be. Not saying it was bad, of course. It was a really good movie, but it I just caught me off guard. So, Ezra Miller has been having a lot of real-life problems. He's been getting arrested for stuff I'm not going to talk about. But, um, honestly, outside of his real-life problems, I think he did a really good job in this movie. And I thought they were going to scrap the movie um, because of what happened to him. But I'm glad they just kept going, and I think maybe he's going to be rebooted alongside of, like, every DC character. But I want to see more of him, but I, I understand why DC would kick him out of the studio because of what happened. So we're going to talk about the end credit scene. Um, they, <laughs> I hated the end credit scene, bro. It was freaking Aquaman and being drunk and the Flash explained to him why he can't get drunk and explained to him why what happened with the parallel universe and stuff. Like, freaking, I thought we were going to see, like, Grant Gustin or something, and, like, running in a separate timeline. Like, what we saw with when the universes were cl clashing together, we saw the 50s Superman, the 60s Superman, the 70s Superman, all those guys. And, like, uh, Nicolas Cage Superman doing, in from the fitting thing um, back in the 90s with um, Tim Burton. But we didn't see anything like the flash related yeah we saw jay garrick from the cw one running uh in the black and white ver world but i wanted to see grant gustin i don't know if that was just me but i wanted a small cameo or something like that oh and yes the crashing world scene that was so cool there was so many 
like references i was my mind was blown i remember i was i watched this movie with all my friends and my friend connor he was sitting like on the other side of the seats for me we're like big dc fans and we were just like freaking out pointing at the screen and stuff the whole time but like you know we were hyped it was so cool if you're a dc fan to watch that scene cgi in this movie was really strange because every time you were in the speed force and like in the slow time stuff it really looked like you were playing a video game and I didn't like that. I thought it was supposed to be like real. But then it said, I was reading an article and it said that like this is in Barry's mind and what he thinks. So I don't know. I, mean, I wish they just could have been honest and like listen, our CGI team was really cheap. So I don't know. It was whatever. Um, one detail I noticed was um, when Barry slows down time, it's like playing Injustice and the screen goes yellow. And it, you, it's like, because in Injustice, um, if you click circle or B, um, when your power thing's ready, uh, your time gets slowed down and it turns yellow, like the screen. And I really like how they did that. And, and it probably wasn't a reference, but I noticed that. Uh, quick shout out to the sound team, freaking adding Michael Keaton's um, bat audio. That was really cool. I was like... When he was flying in the bat wing and you in the song was playing, that was so cool. Like I was freaking out because it brings me back to 1989 and 1992 when his movies came out. I really like what they did with Dark Flash. I'm, I, I know I'm not talking about him much, but like Dark Flash in this movie, when we saw him at the beginning compared to the end and we learned that he's um, 18 year old Barry Allen keep trying to save Batman and Supergirl from being killed from Zod and his team. Um, I really liked how they turned him into the not he wasn't a villain there wasn't really a villain of this movie but he was a main part of uh, the movie's script and stuff and how it worked but if you really think about it like think about it real quickly in the first timeline the first timeline because obviously um, the one our Barry uh, goes through and he got pushed by Black Flash um, you you saw he got pushed by Black Flash but in an alternate world um, where he didn't get pushed, what would happen, you know? So really the whole that part of the script didn't make sense because something had to happen because he didn't get pushed, he wouldn't meet 18 year old Barry. So then he would have just kept going and then who knows, maybe that's when Flashpoint would have started without Reverse Flash. But like, I don't know, they, that's where they kind of messed up the script if you really think about how it started. Another thing I want to talk about is what the hell happened to Barry's mom, you know? <laughs> Who killed her? Was it a robber? Was it reverse flash? Like, I don't know. That kind of bothered me because you saw a knife in her chest and like, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But I think that's pretty much it. I don't, nah, there's nothing else to talk about, honestly. I thought this video was going to be longer because I was going to talk about it a lot. But, oh sh 13 minutes, never mind. Um, alright, yeah. So, The Flash, I'm going to rate this movie like a 9 out of 10, A minus. It was really good. You you can't lie, the movie was really good, but a couple a couple things caught me off guard and a couple things I didn't like. Um <clears throat> CGI. Um that's the only thing that brings it down to a 9. I would give it a 10 if the plot and the CGI was a little bit better. All right, that's it. But yeah, my name is Lucid, that up there's Alvin and I'll catch y'all in the next video. I'll see y'all.